Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining uh, the session today. Uh, thank you, GMAT Club, for hosting this session. Today, we're going to talk uh, to two great candidates uh, that uh, would like to apply to master degrees in business schools. And we're going to chat a bit about their profiles. And hopefully, uh, uh, we will uh, be able to learn a lot from their profiles regarding other profiles as well. Um, this is a YouTube live session. You can write questions, and we will try and answer the comments as we go along. Uh, the way we're going to do is the uh, candidates are going to introduce themselves. We're going to discuss them a bit. And then you can ask questions, and I'll just go through the questions. Um, so just a bit about me. My name is Shimri Winters. Uh, I have a computer science undergraduate degree. I used to work as a programmer at a big IT company. And then I went to London Business School for my MBA. Um, Post MBA, I worked in consulting in London, and then I worked for some big IT companies as a business development manager and manager of managers, etc. And I've been working at Aringo MBA admission consulting for seven years now, full time. This is what I do. Um, Aringo have been going on for eighteen years. We help people get into business school, masters, or MBAs. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> so I think uh, that was my uh, very marketing slides. Now it's a good time to introduce. Uh, our two uh, uh, candidates and to discuss their profiles a bit. So uh, first of all, hi, Max. I'm going to say hi to you first because actually we're not going to talk to you right now. So hi and bye. Hi. <laughs> and we'll talk to you in about 15 minutes. Hi, Pratik. We'll talk with you now. Hi. OK, so first of all, uh, everybody in the audience can actually see your uh, your profile on the screen. It's not a CV, but it's a few bullet points. But I think let's start with you telling uh, telling us about yourself, just like one or two minutes, and then we can discuss your profile a bit more and, of course, your you know uh, aspirations to apply to business schools. Right. Okay. So my name is Pratik, and I am a 21 year old Indian. Uh, I'm currently pursuing my bachelor in technology in electronics and communication at Manipal Institute of Technology. Uh, it's it's a tier one institute in India, and I have I currently have a CGPA of a seven point two till my sixth semester. Uh, I'm currently in the final year, and I had given my first attempt of GMAT uh, in uh, September last year, and I got a six seventy. Uh, I'm hoping to give another attempt soon uh, before the next uh, intake starts. Uh, talking about my work experience, I'm, as you know, I'm still a final year. Uh, by, but by the but I have received an offer from a company called Ugam Solutions, which is a data analytics company. Uh, they work in the retail and consumer uh, sector uh, primarily. Uh, it's a subsidiary of Dentsu International, which is a top five uh, a a advertisement agency uh, in the world. So and Ugam itself is also a multinational company with its offices in uh, US, India, and Australia. Um, so uh, my uh, I have um, my most notable achievements in college would be my leadership experiences, uh, which are two of them. Firstly, I was the elect, uh, EV team head at my a uh, student project in my college, which. Uh, which actually made the university's first electric race car. We actually ended Amazing. up coming third in uh, a national competition as well. And apart from that, I am uh, the co-founder of my uh, startup, uh, which which uh, which is a small group of seven people. Uh, but we have taken part in a national competition and have received a funding of three hundred dollars from Texas Instruments for making the prototype. And my career goals are firstly to get into consulting and later uh, switch, uh, exit consulting after gaining some work experience and get into industry at a strategic level role. OK. OK, Pratik. First of all, thanks for that. Not easy to you know, uh, talk about yourself. I'm used to it. I like yeah. talking about myself. So well done. OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> again, it's, it's not easy. So, so yeah. that was good. Um, second thing, let's talk. Let's try and find some some uh, strengths in your profile, and then look for the areas that I think you can still strengthen uh, before you apply to uh, to these master programs. And again, uh, from what I understand, you still have another year in university, and then probably another year um, to work. So we're talking about you know this this is you know well done. 
you're looking really ahead right now and you know maybe for for two years from now or something like that so that's great uh no actually i would be applying in round one uh which would be in september this year yes for studies in 2022 yeah 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 I, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's great yeah so you're going to finish uh, university this year and then you'll have one yeah. whole year of, of uh, working great right. so first of all you are exactly what uh, master in management programs are looking for okay and i'll explain why so first of all your academics are very strong it's not just that they're strong in terms of your gpa but you've also shown a lot of uh, activity in student engagement projects okay and you know you tell me about building an electric race car you know i want to hear more like this is amazing <laughs> okay so it sounds okay. very interesting um again strong analytics strong uh degree good gpa plus being involved in university is very important for the schools they don't just want people that just went to university and got great grades they want to see some kind of activity um right. what i am I, I want to hear a bit more about the startup and I'm sure you don't have a lot of spare time. What I would want to see a bit more is, is some kind of community activity or some kind of you know volunteering, because I think that's also important. It's also important to show that you have uh, hobbies and interests, but also that you care about the community and you know that you've done something in that area. Have you had, I know it's not here, but have you had some activities? Yes, I have. I have been part of the Rotrac Club of my university. And Fantastic. apart from that, on my own as well, I have uh, done some volunteering uh, experience uh, in a like in a in one of the NGOs near my you know grandparents' village. Yeah. So I I these are like my two. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's great. That's great. And and don't undermine them. Okay, this is very important. Remember that a master in you're looking for a master in management degree. Master in management degree is is maybe similar to an MBA, but for people with up to two years of experience. Now, because it's for young candidates with up to two years, so you can't come now and show your 10 years of professional experience and promotions. No, you're, you're much younger than that. And that's why the schools will definitely look at all the other aspects with a, with a magnifying glass. And what are the other aspects? So we said education, great. Uh, student involvement, great. Uh, some kind of hobbies or activities, you know, you have a startup that that covers your hobbies and activities, uh, some kind of community. And so we've covered those. Now, there's one or two other things that they're looking for. Although you're a young candidate, you're still in university, they would like to see some kind of professional experience. And right. you've mentioned already two things. One, you've mentioned that you are a co-founder of a startup that even got funding from a you know big US company. Um, in just in a couple of words, what's the startup about and what kind of area is it? So uh, we, we're basically making a technology solution for the farmers in India. And we're trying to make the business model such that the farmer does not have to face the financial burden of affording the solution. And it's more from the uh, supply chain the, that we get our uh, whole revenue. Yeah. Uh, Although I would like to add that uh, at the moment I'm not pursuing the startup because the competition uh, had to abruptly end uh, due to COVID and we could not really do a hands-on work and we could not really make the prototype. But we did end up getting the funding and uh, in future I definitely would uh, plan on pursuing that uh, as well. Okay. So I do have that in my mind as well. Okay, okay. So first of all, I love it. Okay, because it covers so many things. First of all, it covers, it, it's kind of, commu it's not volunteering. I know you wanted to do a startup and sell it for $100 million, <laughs> but it does cover, you know, it does show that you care about community, you care about the farmers, okay? And you wanted to try and give them some kind of solution. Second of all is you won, you know, uh, or you managed to get some kind of funding, not very much, but you managed to get some kind of funding. That means you went out, you presented the idea. Uh, another thing is teamwork, okay? It shows that you're not just a solo pilot or whatever analogy we want to think about. You know how to work in a team. I'm sure there were many struggles in the team, okay? Main, maybe one of the team members was underperforming, okay? So there's a great story here. Again, I'm just making it up as I go along because I, I don't know the whole story, but there's something here to discuss, okay? Um, have you, uh, did you have any internships throughout your degree? Uh, 
uh, i did have one internship at a company called abb it's a fortune 500 company in the electronics industry uh my i do have an achievement there as well so i led a small group of 12 interns wow. and we we made a we made a uh, presentation uh, we made a expo presentation uh, which actually ended up getting uh, the company uh, quite a few meetings with prospective clients as well so yeah i love that okay great great so you know sounds good and again even though manage, uh, master in management are looking for young candidates that hardly have any work experience the way to show that you do have work experience is internships okay so you've had one a startup experience again uh, good or bad but it's an experience right. and the fact that you have already secured a job post your graduation is fantastic that's exactly exactly what they're looking for again all the master in management uh successful candidates i've worked with as well as the deferred mba candidates that i've worked with which come from a very similar profile than you just one word on that deferred mba means that you uh apply for business school on your last year of your undergraduate degree but then you still go out to the open to the industry and you work a couple of years before you go to mba but you've secured your place and this is exactly what they're looking for strong academics and some kind of student activity and activities and some kind of proof for work experience and again if you're still young you're still in university or still in college it's fine to show your work experience through internships or through volunteering or through some kind of extracurricular activities that's also okay um so i love that now let's talk about areas that i think uh you know you can strengthen so first thing is you know you come from a competitive background there's no <laughs> there's no yeah. way to hide that and yeah. yeah and you're going for the, you know two top schools okay lbs and ncs um the way to differentiate yourself is first of all you know and you understand this the gmat has to be higher okay you have good academics now continue with the good academics and show me a high gmat score and yeah. although if you look at the master in management uh gmat averages etc because you come from a competitive background you might need a, to be a bit above the gmat average a bit again this is not the only factor but it's one factor and so that's one area i think you know as you're giving it another go at least one more uh that i hope you can improve a bit okay another factor and again this is a bit unknown right now and it, uh i'm not sure when you're going to start your 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 full time job at what month is that going to be july in july okay yeah. okay so uh, i i'm not sure about what i'm going to say now I'm, you know i'm thinking as i'm speaking to you i i might not even recommend applying in round 1 there might be an advantage waiting for round 2 i I'm, i'm just thinking about this with you because in round 2 you'll have a lot more experience to discuss you'll already have more than half a year of experience or you know uh, half a year of experience to discuss already with the schools you'll have more achievements etc now again round 1 is a bit better chances might be a tiny bit higher so there's a bit of a dilemma here um in any case when you start your work and this is difficult you know you're just going to start your junior etc i do recommend trying to find projects that um have some kind of international flavor um if there's international teams or international clients that would also help differentiate you especially for a school like ncad or london business school that really look for candidates although candidates that don't have a lot of experience candidates that have some kind of international experience yeah. and again so far you haven't because you know you haven't worked in a big international company so if there's a way for you again to work with some kind of partner from another country um or even you know uh being with a dentsu uh which is like the mother company somehow i i know this is difficult definitely meant maybe you'll be sent to some kind of training program uh this is very very important to show on your profile that even if you haven't worked in germany for 5 years that you worked with a team from germany that you worked with a team from the uk uh that you work in a diverse group that you managed to work with them and this is something very very important you know schools like ncad in london will put a lot of emphasis on can you work in a diverse team Okay and one last thing that I can just think of is again LBS and NCAD great schools especially LBS okay that's that's the best school let's be honest um but it's just the only school I went to but it's the best um but these are two schools 
I would add, you know, as a safety measure or something, I would add a third and possibly even a fourth school. Um, Asha Separis, for example, okay, that could be a third, a good third school. Uh, I think just applying to two, again, I don't know what the GMAT will be and, you know, how many achievements you'll have at work, but I think just applying to these two is a bit risky. I definitely yeah. understand your backup plan. Backup plan is not to do the master in management, go and work three, four years and go and do an MBA. I, like you, I, I, I understand you don't have to go and do a master in management right now, yeah. but I do think that's a good segue then to your career goals. I think, you know, it's definitely doable and then getting into consulting, et cetera. Uh, but you might want to consider adding another school or two. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that works. Uh, uh, I would, however, like to know if, uh, what would you say would be a good GMAT score? Say I'm applying in round one or round two at both these schools. Yeah, well, you know, that's that's like, always you know, the you know like a minimum or a, yeah, a minimum so, and a great, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I don't think there is a minimum. You have a 670, okay? You're, you're there, you're in the game already, okay? If you had a 600, like, I'm not sure they would open your application. They will open it now, okay? You're in the game. Now, what's a good GMAT score? I said, if you go above the, the school averages, that's good. Okay, so every school has, you know, their own averages. If you score right. 720, right, great. You're above the averages, all good. So it depends which school you're applying to because different schools have different averages. Um, I, I think it would be great to have a 700 and above, but, but the higher, the better, really. And again, the things I would emphasize right now, getting a good GMAT score. I know you're busy. You might have exams now, but this is the time to do it. Um, yeah. And very fast trying to, I know it's very difficult, but very fast at work, trying to take on as many projects, as much work, you know, volunteer to every single thing, you know, work 16 hours a day because you have a very short time to show uh, this experience to the schools. That's why I was thinking maybe round two, maybe not. Um, this is something we, you know, you might, might want to consider, I don't know, in August or something like right. that. Okay. Uh, another thing, again, just, you know, because I'm thinking about it is, the applications take time and yeah. some of the school applications are very long they can definitely take you know two months to write so you know i'm saying yeah let's discuss this in august but actually that might be too late so this is something you again i'm not exactly sure the the dates of when you're starting work uh, how many work days you'll have between uh, july till september this is something you might want to think in advance but again in the next month or two gmat 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 um uh, that's it, you know, and, and emphasis the things that we we discussed, uh, like like the volunteering and extracurriculars, and and I think you should be fine. Thanks. Okay, that, that was a great review. Thank you so much. Okay, okay, Pratik, and and we'll be in touch. Contact me, you know, privately, and we can we can discuss this further. Sure. Uh, so thanks for that, guys. I can see you writing uh, lots of questions, and uh, I you know I love it. And we'll go through the uh, if you have any questions during the session. Uh, we can actually see uh, the questions, but I'm trying to concentrate on the candidates. So uh, thanks, Pratik. Let's move to Max. Hello, Max. Hi, Shimmy. Hi, how are you today? I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good. I'm good. I'm really excited uh, to discuss now your uh, candidacy. Background finance guy from Europe. <laughs> yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> finance guy from Europe, <laughs> a.k.a. Max. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I think people are starting to hear the Dutch accent in your voice. I, I have a feeling uh, it's it's coming out very quickly. Uh, <laughs> give us give us a minute or two about about your profile. Yeah, so I'm Max. I'm from the Netherlands. Indeed, I'm Dutch. Um, so I started with my uh, first bachelor in econometrics at Tilburg University, um, which is actually the number ten university in economics and econometrics in Europe. Um, after two years, I, I took a gap year. Um, I was president of a student society of about 750 members for a year. Um, after that, I, uh, I actually got the crazy idea to start a second bachelor in a different university. Uh, so I started with uh, geological engineering, actually a combination of mining engineering and petroleum and energy uh, engineering. Um, Delft University is ranked 15 uh, in the world of engineering schools, and the faculty is actually ranked second behind MIT. Um, and yeah, I recently completed an internship uh, at a large national bank uh, at the mining and metals uh, team. 
And um, yeah, so some extracurriculars. Um, I did an international research project in not in South America, but in Panama, which is North America, actually. Uh, and I did some voluntary work. So I worked in, uh, I helped the community uh, with a few things with around the elections. And I mentored uh, a Syrian refugee at university in his first steps in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, and yeah, last but not least, uh, I was VP of a, of a trading club at the university. Okay. Okay, uh, oh yeah, and I, also one more thing. I did a, a summer school at LSE in uh, corporate finance. Okay, okay, so that's great, and and you know don't forget that that's that's important. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, what I like about you, and I think you're a great example of how old are you, Max? I'm 24 right now. 24. Okay, a great example of someone that hardly any work experience, but so much is going on. Right. You've done. Uh, uh, sorry to say you've done a lot of things, even in your gap year. It wasn't uh, traveling in Asia with a backpack. You were doing lots of things <laughs> and, you know, being, you know, I just want to take one thing being, I don't know, president of the student society or VP of the trading club or just one thing out of here is really, really interesting. Doing the research pro, uh, project in Panama. I, I thought it was Central America. You know, now I'm learning it's North America. I'll have to check you on that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's even, both. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. So even even that is really interesting. Okay, so I'm sure you could have done a research project on a flower shop in Amsterdam, but no, you did something that you know it shows us an international uh, experience in you know working maybe with people from there, data sources, etc. So I really like that. Um, I really like the fact that so so again, let's let's be a bit more uh, structured. Um, and let's talk about the good things and then maybe the things that I would like to see. Okay, so again, I really like the extracurricular activities. Okay, I kind of started with that. It's, you know, it's not all extracurricular. Some of the things are in university, some are out. I understand that. But it's nice that you have, you know, a lot of interest and you take ownership. Okay, so I like trading. I was part of the trading club. Great, but you didn't do that. You were the VP of the trading club. <laughs> OK, I'm part of the student association or society because they give a good discount for something. No, you were the president of the. OK, so this is something great. It shows initiative. I'm sure you can also show, you know, leadership activities. You can you can show team membership uh, things that went wrong or went well. You know how you motivated people that don't get money or things like that. So I, I'm sure you have from these experiences a lot of um, a lot of experiences that again can kind of um, cover or, or kind of uh, show that you have potential, although you haven't worked for five years at McKinsey, okay? <laughs> so you don't have that kind of employment history. You're young, it's fine. But you've done so many extracurricular things. So extracurricular is great. I'm not sure what the voluntary work is. Uh, you said about the, the Syrian refugee. Uh, I don't know if there was you know something else, but as long as there's like one other thing in the last, five years that sounds fine okay like i wouldn't you don't need to do anything special it sounds like you've got quite a lot going on as it is okay in terms of uh, academics so extracurricular great volunteering sounds like you have a bit in terms of academics uh great so and i also like the way you 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 discuss this and it's fine and you know it's really legitimate that after one year you said you know what i'm actually going to do another bachelor's degree Okay, it's fine. You don't have to know all the answers when you're 17 and know exactly which degree to go to. And okay, so you you know your your mind is expanding. You're learning new things. You want to learn new things, and you decided to do another bachelor's degree in another university. Okay, yeah. which is not not very common and very very difficult. Okay, I'm sure you could have added some courses in your first university and had a dual degree, but you no, know, you decided kind of to do two bachelor degrees. Um, GPA looks very very high. Um, econometrics is not a very uh, known degree, but you know, uh, statistics, analytical summing. There's lots of you know equivalent degrees, right, in this in this area. So I would maybe mention kind of what it is in case uh, you're sending it to someone who's not exactly uh, sure what it is. Um, but you know, very high GPAs. Um, so in that sense, all good. Okay, so I like the extracurriculars. Volunteering is okay. I love your hobbies and whatever. We can all we can tie it all up. And very strong, uh, 
education. Have you finished both degrees or are you still in the process? Of yeah, I'm, a, I'm in my last semester right now. Um, okay, good luck. Yeah, good this luck. is my, my first week in my last semester. So, okay, uh, okay, wow, okay. Press this is on. the time to, um, uh, yeah, take the GMAT. So I've been yeah, studying yeah, yeah. and um, so my that brings base us nice test thing, yeah. was already at uh, 710. Okay. Um, so I'm pretty confident that if I ace the, the verbal part, that'll it'll be fine because the quant part is really easy, basically. Okay, for, so so that's me. what I was gonna say. So so now we're coming to the, the areas that yeah. I think we, we need to you know work on a strength. So first one is the GMAT. Okay, it's very simple. No GMAT, no masters, right? We we understand yeah. this. And master in finance, they they you know, again, they like good GMATs. Now you're very analytical, it's obvious you have two analytical degrees. But you know you need you need a good GMAT, and again, if you're aiming for the best schools like LSC or you know one of the best schools in the world, um, yeah, I don't know if it's a 720 and above or something like that. But that's what that's what you're aiming for, okay? Minimum, right. yeah. I'm, but but I'm sure you can score good scores. Uh, again, you have very analytical uh, uh, degrees. This is the time, you know, your mind is still good in uh, in exams, etc. Um, sorry for the stereotyping. You have great English, okay? I you so it's just a matter of practicing, etc. Right? So there's a lot of it's a matter of effort. The GMAT basically, how much time you can put in, that's you know that's how the degree the the score will look. So the more time you put in, the you know the higher the score will be. Um, my main so GMAT fine. Let's say you you score the GMAT. Now my main worry, um, which we can discuss how we can overcome, is actually going for a master in finance degree okay because yeah. your undergraduate degree is not in economics or it's not in finance um and the way to overcome it is exactly what you did first of all the internship was a financial internship <laughs> okay you went to work for a bank for four months so that's great second of all already just from looking at your leadership roles i can see you have a hobby <laughs> which is to do with trading right otherwise you weren't went in the trading club maybe you don't trade Maybe you're not a day trader, but still you, you get interested by trading and finance and things like that. I think it's very important to try and show more um, finance, hobbies, slash activities. Ah, you said you did an LSC. Uh, um, yeah, that's exactly work. why I went to summer school to LSE. School, and yeah. uh, with my bachelor in econometrics, I also took a, a minor in finance. Okay, so that's all on my okay. CV, of course. Uh, okay, good, good, good. So that's exactly the things I want. So basically, I want the word finance to be on f at least four <laughs> or five places on your CV, okay? <laughs> and you know, I see this problem quite a lot with um, with engineers, okay? Someone yeah. that has an engineer, a software engine, you know, engineering degree like me, I don't know what, he's a computer programmer for one year, and he wants a master in finance degree because he wants to be an investment banker. And this is actually a problem, okay? So you want to be an investment banker, but in your 24 years till today, you haven't done anything to do with finance, <laughs> okay? Yeah. And, and that's a problem because it's not the right degree for, for that person. By the way, in that, that person, I would suggest to do a master in uh, data analytics or in uh, master in management or something in that kind of area. But, but it's very risky to do a um, uh, master in finance. But in your case, again, as long as you can show that uh, finance passion, let's call it, um, you should be fine, okay? Um, another thing is if you are applying uh, in round one for 2022, uh, you will be unemployed shortly because your university is going to finish. And if you yeah, can... I'm, your... I'm really going to try to apply for this year. So ah, okay, I okay, great, really great, great. Take the GMAT in two weeks' time and apply, and apply in, in March. <laughs> that's that's what I was going to say. So, schools don't like a big gap in your CV, and yeah. if if you you either apply straight after university or you kind of concentrate on finding a job and already mentioning that job, even if it's in the future, in your application. Okay, so so I think again, age wise, etc., you're fine for applying now. Uh, one word, let's talk about the, the schools that you're aiming for, but one word on master in finance is um, some schools have a minimum of work experience for master in finance, and some schools have a master in finance, which is designed for people like in a master in management for, what, for up to two years of experience. You can have zero, one, or two <laughs> years of experience. 
Uh, so someone like Max, who you know did an internship but doesn't have a lot of full-time work experience, can definitely apply to a master in finance at LSE. But uh, London Business School Master in Finance will actually require Max to go and work for a year or two, or I think two years, somewhere before he applies. So there when are you actually, look at, there are two programs at uh, LBS right now. So there's I know, a, I know, I know. A there's the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so there's Max is right. I, I know. So <laughs> one is for, for people. No, 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 no. So you're absolutely right. So I, I didn't mention that. One program is for people with no work experience or very little work experience. And one is for people which are, uh, let's call them uh, professionals in the industry. And again, you have to make sure that you're applying to the right program uh, in every school, et cetera. Um, what I like about uh, what Max is doing is he also mentioned four schools that he's interested in. OK, um, so we can see they're all in the UK. <laughs> That's good. Um, again, go for as many, especially as you're applying in the last round, go for as many schools as possible. Uh, I think you mentioned the best ones. Um, you know, you can look at one or two others. There's, you know, City in in uh, London, uh, Cass Business School. Uh, I I can't remember if uh, Cambridge have the one for non-experienced candidates. Oh. Exactly, I, that's what I what I thought. So, but try and think of try and look for as many schools as possible. Again, you mentioned four. I I think this is enough if you get a good GMAT. Okay, I I'm really impressed with your profile. I can see you have a drive for you know for for this program. Uh, like you said, it's going to be very pressured. Um, okay, GMAT in two weeks, and you want to do applications in the next month. <laughs> so it's all going to be pressured. But uh, as long as you can, um, as long as you can make that happen, you know, I think you have a, a good chance, Max. So you know, overall, GMAT, 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 and concentrate on the application. Uh, a word also for Pratik and for any candidate. Um, there's the education, <laughs> there's the GMAT, but there's everything else. OK, and roughly speaking, it's, it's very hard from from depends. Every master's is a bit different. The, the split in terms of, you know, how much everything is important, but it can be roughly, let's just say 50 50. OK, so the GMAT plus education. Fantastic. But that's only 50 percent of your application. What's the other 50 percent? Your application itself. OK, and that's the way you write your CV, obviously the content, but the way you write your CV the way you write your essays, what you decide to write about, okay? Your career goals, why are you taking this degree? Does it make sense? Is it connected to your past, okay? Is it, like I said, uh, a mechanical engineer that wants to work in finance because that's his dream, okay? No, that that's not strong enough. But if it's an engineer that uh, does day trading, he's been to the finance club, he reads all the finance newspapers and he's taken a, a finance, uh, it's not you, Max, He's taken a finance uh, summer school, not at LSE. Okay, that's someone that already, you know, that, that shows that he's really interested in finance so he can apply to the master in finance. So the application is very, very important. Again, three elements, resume, essays, recommendations. All of them are important, okay? There's no, you know, can I not uh, concentrate on one of them? No, they're all important. And if you have a good application, uh, someone like Max, I definitely see you getting into at least one of these schools if not more. By the way, Max, I'm not too worried about applying late, okay? There's still slots in all the schools. Don't worry about that too much. If your application is good, you'll be able to get in. Yeah, I postponed my application to uh, to do my internship and uh, I maybe want to find a second internship for this summer. I'm in some applications right now to at least okay. have it on my CV. That would be amazing, yeah. And uh, I got my GPA up from 3.6 to 3.9, so that's an extra boost. Very good, very good. <laughs> okay, okay, Max. So that's it for me. Again, um, feel free to send me your CV, you know, for a for a little uh, personal uh, <laughs> assessment. But uh, I think again, someone like you, great CV, very dedicated, very focused, knows what he wants to do, and uh, I, I think it's a Pratik and you are. I love these kind of candidates that know in advance what they want to do, and they they know the next steps. Now they just need to get there. OK, and that's it. So first of all, guys, Pratik and Max, thanks very much. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you to both. OK, so thanks. And um, thank you very what much. I'll, OK, and what I'll do uh, very, very quickly or slowly, I'll go through now all the questions that were on YouTube. Uh, I hope uh, uh, I can I hope I managed to help some of the people uh, that were watching us. And let's try and answer 
some questions uh, on YouTube. So I'm just scrolling down, you know, first in, first served, guys. So whoever asks good questions uh, might get an answer. Uh, so uh, question number one uh, was, uh, can they get into uh, HEC Paris, uh, Paris uh, with a specific GPA? I want to explain that the GPA is just one factor. Also the GMAT, it's just one factor. So I get these questions a lot of times. Is a 700 enough or whatever? Yes, it's enough. But what about the other <laughs> factors? And if you have a good profile, like we discussed with Pratik or with Max, and uh, a good G a GMAT, and good extracurricular activities, and good volunteering, and your GPA is, it, well, this isn't mediocre, but your GPA is OK minus, <laughs> OK, whatever that is, that's fine. OK, this is just one factor. What you should do is manage to overcome this with showing the other stories. And again, I have candidates that don't do a lot of volunteering, but they have five or six hobbies. I have candidates who have don't have any hobbies, but they do five or six volunteering things, or they uh, are very active in the student committees or things like that in university. So as long as you can show something else that, that takes your time and overcomes, it's fine. There's no perfect profile. So just, just work on all the other elements as well. OK, that was one question about GPA. I'm scrolling down your questions. When will this session commence? Well, it started. <laughs> that was a good question. I can't see any more. Um, how do you register, by the way, to these, uh, to these questions, uh, to these assessments? Well, through GMAT Club, there's various uh, um, ways to get on these sessions in the future. Um, I can just see one more question. Is financial engineering a good step for someone with an engineering background, uh, but the trading work experience? Oh, very complicated question. So like I said, there's no perfect, uh, there's no perfect background, okay? And like Max, basically his first degree, that's the, the first one, was in statistics, okay, econometrics. This isn't a finance-based degree. He could have taken it to a PhD in maths. Okay, he could have taken it in many routes, but because his, uh, let's call it hobby, his interest is finance, and he did a lot of courses in finance, and he went to the summer school in finance, and he went to training. So th th that worked on his profile in the right direction. Um, same thing with, uh, okay, anyone else. So as long as you can show interest in that specific degree, you should be fine. Um, so I don't know if financial engineering is good or bad. You know, it's it's one route. There's, there isn't any right any right route. I did a computer science degree and went for an MBA. There isn't you know any right or wrong route. Um, right. Someone asked me about co-founding a startup uh, that raised a few million dollars. That's a nice story for Pratik who raised a couple hundred dollars. So <laughs> great. You know, fantastic. Um, if you don't want to mention the number. OK, or you can't mention the number. You're under an NDA or something like that. So don't mention the number, OK? Um, if you can hint the number raised, you know, millions of dollars or raised a seven-digit number, or if you can hint something like that, obviously, that's very, very impressive. If you can't, you can't, OK? So you can just say what you can say. You know, worked in a startup, raised a lot of money, hired 10 people, worked with two venture capital funds, you know, that, that I think that shows, you know, being very serious. If it was 3 million or 7 million or 100,000, that's less important. So definitely, definitely mention a startup and especially for, for young candidates who are going for these master degrees that don't have a lot of work experience, it's very important to show anything else. And even if you started a startup and worked with one friend in your home, for six months developing an app that nothing happened with it. That's still a very interesting experience. So even a failure story is fine because you learned a lot from this startup experience. You learned how to work with someone. You learned how to do market analysis. You learned what the cost would be to launch the product. And maybe you learned maybe six months later why it's not such a good idea to launch a Candy Crush equivalent on the App Store. OK, because Candy Crush are very big and you're very small. OK, but you learned that. You learned how to do this marketing analysis, et cetera. So also failure stories are fine. OK, don't don't be worried about that. OK, um, OK, we have a couple more questions coming in. Um, uh, 
Okay, someone's asking about him being, is he overrepresented, highly represented, underrepresented? That's a great question, <laughs> okay? We use these uh, words a lot when we do these sessions. Uh, again, I would actually ignore that for a second. You're not represented or not represented, you, you. And you need to think how your profile is different than your peers' profile. Doesn't matter if you come from Iceland, from India, or from the US, okay? If you went to a very, not very good university and your, your GPA is not very good and you don't have work experience and you don't volunteer, it doesn't matter if you're represented or overrepresented or underrepresented, I can tell you now you're not gonna get in anywhere, <laughs> right? Because your profile isn't good. And if you come from a very large country with a lot of candidates or from a very small country, but your profile is very special and unique and strong in all the aspects we discussed today, so you have a good chance, okay? So whether you're from India or China or Liechtenstein, okay? It's, it's fine as long as your profile is strong. So I would, you know, less consider these things. Yes, we, we sometimes fall into these pitfalls. Well, oh, you come from India, maybe your GMAT should be, you know, 20 points above average. And oh, you come from a small country, maybe your GMAT can be 20 points below. That's just... It's maybe right in the big picture, but in the small picture, who are you? What's your profile like? That's more important. Okay, so I think those are the more important things. Guys, by the way, we're nearly finished. We're gonna take two or three more questions and or even less and finish. Um, so uh, someone asked about LSC and do they discourage more than two years of work experience? So every uh, every degree is a bit different. And the, the best way to do to, to look at this is actually to go into LSE, look at the degree that you're looking for. I don't know which masters you're looking for. There's lots of masters at LSE. They will actually write it. You can Google LSE, master in business analytics or whatever, master in finance, prerequisites. You will get to the right page and it will say, it will say if the prerequisite is a GPA, is a is an undergraduate degree. Usually they say undergraduate degree 2.1 and above or something like that. So you have some kind of minimum score or they will say a minimum of three uh, years of experience. Another way is to look at, um, they, a lot of them have a student profile and you can see if the student profile is three to eight years of experience, well, that's the degree for experienced candidates. If the student profile is zero to one, okay, so you will manage to see that. So every school is a bit different. That's why I'm trying, you know, not to answer you exactly. Go into the school, go into the degree that you're looking for um, and look into the prerequisites. So I think that was enough for this session. <laughs> uh, I was trying to talk very quickly. I hope uh, it wasn't too quick. So we cover a lot. Um, thank you, GMAT Club, for uh, hosting this session. I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you, Max and Pratik. Um, thanks a lot. Um, check us out on oringo.com if you want. I'm always available also to answer uh, private questions if you send me your CV. Um, and that's it for me. So again, thanks GMAT Club and see you in future events. And good luck, Max and Pratik. That's the most important thing right now. Thanks. Yeah, thank you.